Natasha and Diane, you both wrote songs from films about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, this feminist the notorious icon. RBG. The yeah. notorious RBG. Long may she live. <laughs> but tell me about approaching those songs when you know you are writing for a story about such an icon. You know, I wanted to, you know, write like a song that could be her theme, you mm -hmm. know, because she, she is a fighter, so I'll, I'll fight. You know, she speaks so softly, but she's louder than anybody. You know what she, what she has to say and what she stands for, which is us. Um, but when I, when I write a song for this or when I write a song for any movie, I want it to live out, like, uh, obviously first and foremost it has to live for the movie and be Ruth Bader Ginsburg's theme song, but I want it to be also outside of the movie where it could be, you could be saying that to your friends, you could be saying it to your kids. It can stand you could, on its own outside. Yeah, yeah. like that, I'll, I'll fight that war for you, like the, just that, that I've got your back, you know. Um, I don't get writer's block a lot, knock on, and there's more here than there. Um, you know, I, I get stuck on individual, I write by myself most of the time, so everything will be really easy, then one little piece will be fucking, oh, sorry. No, you can do it. You can fucking say whatever <laughs> okay. the fuck you want. Well, we'll like, just like, it, it'll be so hard, and it'll, like I'll spend two days on two lines, but the rest of the song was like, Easy, I don't know. So it's, it's always different, but I just, if I believe in a song, I just have to like, you know, walk away for a minute, you know. Were either of you taking inspiration from intolerance you may have experienced in the music industry when you were writing these? Not, not me, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. that, that Did you both meet her? Have you both like got to talk to her since no. they've heard the song? I no, I was I was supposed to meet her like there was a screening. Glory, like I met Gloria Steinem. That was oh, pretty fuck, that's amazing! Cool. You know, mm -hmm. like that was cool. Yeah. So, but she was supposed to come this like a couple weeks ago, and like, and like the last minute she didn't show up because there was like tr she had another event to go to. We were all pretty bummed. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. I met Gloria <laughs> Steinem. That's pretty awesome. If but either of you does meet her, will you tell her we love her? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's so small. Yeah, tell her hi from the panel. Like, <laughs> she's like, she's so gentle. Like, yeah. Oh my God, I'm like, I, it'll be like meeting, you know, I don't know. She's such a superstar. Yeah, she's a know? superhero. And she's I a think. superstar to like, little kids. Like, you, yeah. you know that there's a store, Kitson? Yeah. yeah that, the, the guy that runs it was telling me, like, the hottest stuff is going to be Ruth yeah. Bader Ginsburg swag. <laughs> Not Kardashian, none of that stuff. Like, like it, and that gives you hope, you know? How has music saved you in your own life? Give me an example of a time. I mean, to me, is that the music saves you, but it's saving other people too. Because a song you write, you know, you know, as artists, like mm -hmm. what they what they do. Like I'm, I'm just a songwriter. I'm not an artist, but you know, I get notes from people. Like literally, songs time. can save mm -hmm. your life. Like mm -hmm. the people wanted to kill themselves, and they, you know, and then somehow a song you wrote, like in your little room, just saved someone's life. So what we do. Is really important. It's a powerful thing what we do, and it, we're yeah. very fortunate to be able to do it. Very fortunate to be in a position to be able to. Because a lot of people never get in a position to be able to do it on, yeah. on a scale that we're we're able to do it. And that's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. And it's a powerful, powerful. thing. I'm curious when the song is done. You know, in the movie industry, you go through test screenings to get feedback on what works and what doesn't. Who do you first? show a song to? It's always good to have someone that could tell you something sucks, or somebody that I work with, Julie, that I worked with for a long time, that I'll play something, she's like, no. <laughs> you know, like, like, it's good to have those people. You need that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I want, I want someone to tell me something isn't right, or I could be better. Usually. You have a like, sort of yeah, go-to little I, group, yeah. and, and, and a lot of times for me, it's people that, most of the group of people I go to are people that's not, that are not in the music industry at all. No, but they're people whose taste you trust. Yeah. Taste yeah, because other songwriters have too much baggage. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have people who can be critical of my stuff, and, and, and I trust them. You know, yeah. I, I know that I trust their taste because they've done good work. My trainer right. has, my tra I have a trainer that I've worked out with for like 29 years now, and I've taught him about song, like he's learned about song structure. He'll go, yeah. that. You better have that second verse, be, you know, that B section, it, it's, it's not as strong, like, he, like, he's a trainer, <laughs> but, I, but he has really good taste, he, like, I listen to him. Hey, what's up? Hey, it's Kesha. Hey, I'm Mark Ronson. I'm David Crosby. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter Songwriter Roundtable. Songwriter Roundtable on Pirate Bay. I mean, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>